Welcome back to Retro Wednesday. This is Mike and I'm coming at you with another video. This time I want to talk to you about the most common, the most popular, the most remembered playset from the vintage Kenner Star Wars area. No, it's not the Death Star. It's the Ewok Village action playset. It packs a bunch of action features. It's a little bit of fun in a little playset that felt big back in the day. We're going to talk about this coming up. First off, I want to take a look at the packaging, the box itself, and it's a pretty cool box. It's a whole lot of fun to see vintage packaging. It really brings me back to back in the day, and I saw these on the shelf, and some stuff was confusing about it, but when you look at the packaging, there's a few things you want to see real quick. First of all, during the scenes that we saw, Han wasn't wearing that costume, Luke wasn't wearing that outfit, or whatever you want to call it, and the Ewoks, there's really only two Ewoks featured on this whole playset, which is kind of crazy, but they knew they had more planned in the future. Looking at the top here, we see a couple of action elements with the net and the elevator and all this fun stuff we're going to get into. And then looking around the side, well, not very interesting, but the back. Now, this is line work drawing. Now, if you are familiar with vintage style packaging, then you know that they had the lines, line drawing, and then this is a sticker. This isn't printed, it's a sticker. And the sticker was stuck on, and so to save money, they had a line drawing on the back and the sides, and a sticker on the top and the front. But I, I kind of think that later on they did do full scale packaging, even on the big ones, but I mean, this is 1983. There's not much later on to talk about. First thing I want to say is that you're going to see that this is outfitted with a plethora of figures and you could not do this right away in 1983. Not all these figures existed, but we're going to go with it. I'm kind of leaving this Han in there for now and that's just going to be how we do it because that's what the box showed. And then this Leia back here didn't, I don't think, I don't know if she was around at the time, but if you really want to go with accuracy, I would think that the Bespin Leia with no cape would look closer to her whole uh, scene when she was on here. But anyway, we're just going to leave it like that. And looking at a lot of these features, we're going to start talking about some of these features on this playset. This playset overall is made up of one, two, three trees, and a platform, and then a bunch of accessories. So within these accessories, there are the play features. The first thing I want to talk about is the Han Solo or any of these figures that that you can kind of rotisserie grill and they can fall off. But it's kind of like a rotisserie kind of grill for these figures. What did he say? I'm rather embarrassed, General Solo, but it appears you are to be the main course at a banquet in my honor. When you turn this crank, you can rotisserie grill Han Solo or whoever else is in there. But if you want to be accurate to the scene, you've got to figure out a way to rig Luke up in all of this also. Because the next part, the next play feature, wouldn't even work. The next play feature is right here with the C-3PO and his chair and where Luke can use his force powers, use the false Luke, to lift C-3PO and his chair. Now this does, I, have, I struggle with this, to get everything to work the way I'd want it to. Uh, as a kid, I remember it was a challenge, but you know, we can lift C-3PO and his chair and do a whole bunch of fun stuff. Now I do want to point out there is a peg hole right here and a peg hole back there. And looking at this, I always felt like they, they put this just the perfect distance right here for two Ewoks to carry them, and that works. Like, I, when you try to look at where the peg hole placement is on this, that makes a lot of sense. The feature on this playset is the net, and it seems like such a small feature that really works well. Now, um, I don't think I have all of my, it's supposed to have four different points where it comes together, 
and I only have, I don't think I had it set up right. But anyway, it still gets the job done. You see, it gets the job done. And another thing you can do is wrap it around this here, however many times you'd like, and then plug this piece in and hold it in place. So that works too. It, it's a cool play feature, which is a lot of fun. And of course, Luke's gonna ask what? R2, can you get to my lightsaber? Or Han, can you get to my lightsaber? No, R2 is going to cut us out of this. Again, these two figures came along. I know they had to have had this planned, knowing this place that was coming, knowing how big Return of the Jedi was at the time. They had these figures coming all along. Let's tighten that up a bit. The next play feature is kind of goofy. You're going to throw a figure in the hole here. And then you're going to pull them out at the bottom of the tree trunk of the tree branch and I always had trouble getting my figures out of here always when you, when you drop them in this it was always a challenge to get it out not a feature I, I use I use it more of I'm hiding I'm gonna hide in here and and nobody's gonna find me Darth Vader's gonna walk by he's not gonna see me but looking at this tree trunk part here it's just hollow pretty much uh, it's it's solid at the top and then hollow down solid at the bottom and then you can just take the figure out there next on the agenda is the elevator you actually have two slots one here and one here so two pegs that you can peg a figure into and then when you peg your figure into this slot here got to make sure he clears that obviously he will and then peg another figure into the other slot and then yeah, it's a challenge, all right. But it works, you know, if it works, it works. And then we're gonna show you the whole cranking mechanism here in a second. So you start cranking on this and you can just pull the elevator to the top. Now there's a couple of issues with the elevator. First of all, if you get it in a sweet spot, it'll kind of hold. But with two figures in it, it's kind of a challenge to hold. I've always, as a kid, I did this and I set this up here at the top. I felt like this was an issue from day one. So once it gets to the top, you just kind of set it on the top. And it is perfect for perfectly level for the figures to get off. The next feature on this playset is the boulder, the swinging boulder. And, you know, it's going to swing and hit like a scout trooper. Oh, it's like my favorite stormtrooper. My favorite version of stormtrooper is a scout trooper. That was painful to watch. But, but I really think this is more suited for this. Oh, see, this is kind of a scene that I would have liked to see represented in this playset, but properly. And I think that with today's technology or figures, I, I don't know what this came from. Is it the Geonosis playset? Whatever this came from, it would work if you could, you know, make two of them slam into his head. You could sit him right underneath it and have two of them go boom, because that's what happened in the show or in the movie. I would like to see something like that. So I did feel like this failed right here. This boulder was a fail to me. When it comes to the vintage toys, there's a lot of things that could be done better in the modern line. I think one of the things that was done better, done vastly better, and it's just ultra simplistic too, is this chair. Uh, yeah, these guys didn't want to stay on their stance. Who cares? But it's done a lot better, and I don't really know how to explain it. It looks more accurate and it works better. Putting C-3PO in here, he sits a whole lot better in my opinion, and it looks more accurate, and it works a whole lot better. But you know, again, modern technology, modern sculpting is gonna be better than vintage, and how much of this was done without having accurate artwork, and yeah, functionality is better. I just really like this modern one so much better. I'd much prefer it even though the vintage one has some charm. Real quick, a couple of mentions on this thing. It does have three rails and they are all different. So it is kind of frustrating if you try to get these rails and it's like, oh wait, you know, I already have that one. Uh, I suffer from the I already have that one syndrome when I was trying to complete this guy. And uh, looking at this, uh, there's a fire pit. That is the only sticker that came with this whole set, which is kind of cool. And there it is, that's, that's the features. This drum here is cool because of a couple things. First of all, the drum plugs in and there's actually a peg for someone to stand right in front of the drum 
and that works out. So I've promised Easter eggs in the past, but never has it been a mathematic equation. What do you have, say, a whole bunch of just extra trees just randomly laying around? Like, what am I going to do with all these extra trees? I don't, I don't know. 20 years of collecting, and I don't know why I have them. And then you're like, well, what if we got a bunch of extra platforms? I mean, what am I going to do with all this stuff? It really doesn't make sense to have more than one Ewok village, right? So if you're watching the same movie I was back in 1983, and I bet that you were, then I bet you noticed that there's more than just three trees in the Ewok village. I always thought that if you had two or three Ewok villages, even if they're not complete, would make a much better scene, a much better diorama, and a much better display than, say, one three-tree set. I thought it would be really good to represent every single scene that was going on and the more things went on at the exact same time than we saw in just just a three tree set. There was so much going on with Luke talking to Leia, C-3PO doing his stuff, and of course there were the battles. We saw the, the oncoming troopers ready to take out the, I mean be taken out. As a kid, I have to admit that this playset was pretty interesting, it was pretty big, and I'll have a confession, I actually never had this as a kid. My brother had it. That's the only reason I had anything to do with it, was because of my brother and that he owned it. And of course, I played with it more than he did, and I treated it like it was mine. But as an adult, I do feel like this was slightly underwhelming as a playset, and a bit small. And that's why I feel like having multiples is way more fun. As you guys probably could guess, there's no way I was going to be able to make it through this without talking about the obvious Kenner reuse of the mold of the Ewok Village into the Sherwood Forest. I mean, obviously everybody talks about this. This is something that's pretty common knowledge. But on the flip side, there was a time where I didn't even know this thing was going on. And I picked this up for a song and a dance. It's strange how the Sherwood Forest is so much cheaper than an Ewok Village. Aside from the obvious knockoff or reuse of this Sherwood Forest, the Ewok Village, you've got Friar Tuck and the Gamorrean Guard, which shared about 90%, changed the head sculpt and then the coloring. But uh, you also see closer in here, you can see that this Robin Hood and this uh, Green Arrow share a lot of the body. So they did use a lot of remold, and I, I don't hate it. It's kind of fun. It's kind of a fun quirk of the Kinner. Looking at this overall, I probably would like to track down a couple more of these sets of the Sherwood Forest and spread out these, these green leaf tops or the, the tree leaves, the tops, to spread it around and make it look good. That would be kind of cool. That would be kind of a lot of fun uh, if I could do that, if it would work out. I know that some of them, they have some holes drilled and stuff. I, I wouldn't go after that, but, but the stuff that fits would work for me. Let me know what you think about this 1983 Kenner Ewok Village and, of course, the reuse and the remote into the Sherwood Forest. Did you have one of these back in the day? Do you have one of these now? This is something you're looking for. I'm going to tell you real quick that I got my one with a box for $50 back in about about a decade ago and there were about five of them to choose from I just picked the one that I thought the box looked the best and that was fifty dollars shipped a decade ago straight on eBay nowadays they go for about a hundred for a complete one maybe 120 uh, with a box depending on condition and that goes way up I just did a search there are almost 300 sets on eBay right now so this is the most common play set in vintage Star Wars by far. If you want one of these, you can make an offer and probably get it and name your price because there are just so many out there. Uh, I, I have to admit that the majority of the parts I bought for this a decade ago, I only paid a dollar each for the parts. Now, nowadays, the parts are a lot more expensive, but let me know what you think. I hope I brought you back. I hope you really enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, put it in your hanger. Out.